First, I unboxed it, then I installed it. In this video, I'm going to review it and give it a DIY ability score. Hello and welcome to my channel. We're inside this BMW X5 and I'll be doing a brief demo of this Android head unit that I just installed. Then I'm going to talk about my installation experience, the fit and finish, and finally, I'm going to give it the first ever DIY ability score. But first up, let's see how it works. Startup time is fairly quick. As you can see here, it took just a bit over two seconds to display the home screen. As a reference, this head unit has four gigabytes of RAM, so it's fairly beefed up. This one has an optional Apple CarPlay or Android Auto USB dongle. If you have an Apple device, it supports wireless CarPlay. If you have an Android device, unfortunately, you have to plug it in. What you see here is the AutoKit app, which you can download from the link provided in the box when you buy the product. You'll see that the AutoKit app has detected the presence of a USB dongle because the plug icon is illuminated green, and it's now waiting for the smartphone to connect using Bluetooth. At this point, you need to make sure that your phone's Bluetooth is activated. If your phone is currently connected to another Bluetooth audio device, let's say for example the car has a built-in Bluetooth audio, the AutoKit app might fail on the first attempt, but after a few attempts you'll notice that it'll succeed eventually. Since I have Apple Maps running on my phone when CarPlay started, that app is automatically projected on the head unit. Based on my first impression, tapping the buttons and swiping the screen feels really responsive. You can see there's a BMW icon inside CarPlay. Tapping this button will take you back to the Android homepage. You may want to do this from time to time if you want to listen to radio, for example. But in my experience, I rarely close CarPlay at all. If you didn't buy the optional CarPlay USB dongle, you have the option to use this app called Easy Connection. This app can mirror the screen on your smartphone and project it to the head unit. Like AutoKit, if you have an Apple device, you can use wireless mirroring. The downside to this app is that you can't actually interact with your smartphone using the head unit, even though you can see the smartphone screen right there. In terms of fit and finish, it has that matte look so it blends well in the dashboard. I wouldn't say perfectly because you'll notice ever so slightly that the black trim around the aircon vent has a rough matte finish whereas the head unit has a smooth matte finish. But it does have that nice and simple design, you know, nothing outrageous. It doesn't look out of place with its surroundings. Uh, screen visibility is also great, perhaps because of the tilted screen design. And, and this is the reason why I picked this style. Um, as I mentioned earlier in my unboxing video, there are three types of head unit styles to choose from, and I, I picked this one because of the tilted screen design. In terms of the fun factor of this project, did I enjoy it? Uh, yes, definitely. Looking back at what I did, the issues I come across, and how I solved all of them, I would do this project again. The only thing I would like to change, if possible, is for the manufacturer to build this head unit by positioning the body of the device maybe 1 or 2 cm lower than where it is now, so whoever is installing this wouldn't need a special tool to cut the plastic frame around the original stereo. If that happens, I would have given this project a higher fun factor score. And now I'm gonna give this project a DIY ability score. This is the part where I rate the work I've done by judging it across five categories. Each category gets a weighted score between one to 10, one being the lowest and 10 being the highest. So the maximum score any DIY project can get is 50. The first category is affordability. Price range for the head units I researched for this car varies somewhere between $400 and $800. The one I end up got buying cost me around $500, so this project gets an affordability score of 6 out of 10. The build quality of the head unit is very solid. The wiring harness and the canvas decoder are both plug and play, no fiddling required. This project gets 8 out of 10 for build quality. Moving on to the satisfaction rating, 
For me, this project has a good effort to outcome ratio, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I'm giving this project a score of seven in this category. In terms of fit and finish, the material used in this head unit did not perfectly match the existing trims in the car, and it also blocks the air con vent just a bit. This project gets a six out of 10 in this category. And last but not the least, fun factor. Surprisingly, this project has just the right amount of complexity for me. It didn't push me over the edge or anything, so I'm giving this project a score of eight out of 10. Giving this project a total DIYability score of 35.25 out of 50. And that's all I have time for in this video. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And finally, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification icon so you don't miss any of my updates.